our recent Titanic trilogy is turning into a tetralogy. We're steering off course though in order to bring you the maximum amount of entertainment with a little bit of a lighter spin. You've seen the memes, right? Just as a quick reminder, here are a few. Nothing quite like a goofy joke 100 years later, huh? While it is pretty funny and seems like a reasonable thing with a possibility of happening, we've got to dive a little deeper to figure out if these tasty crustaceans had a fighting chance out in the big blue. Hello fellow friends and philosophers and welcome back to the most mind-bending channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. I'm your voice in the void, Keegan Hughes, and today we're addressing the question on everyone's mind every single day. What happened to the lobsters on the Titanic? Before we bring the water to a boil, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more seafood fun. Fantastic! Let's get started. So what do we mean when asking this question? Well, thanks to a souvenir menu taken off board in Ireland way back in the day, we know for a fact that the lobster was indeed served on the great ship. And why wouldn't it be? Of course the crew would serve their high class guests the king of the sea. Never mind the fact that lobster used to be considered peasant food. Most of the time, if restaurants are going to serve lobster, they're going to serve it fresh. A generally accepted way to cook lobster is live. This ensures that they are real fresh and also gives the folks an opportunity to choose their favorite from the tank. So we're going to assume that there were indeed lobster tanks somewhere aboard the Titanic. Live lobsters chilling, waiting to be boiled in a big pot and served with lemon and butter. Oh, what a life. God, I wish that were me. One day, while waiting for their grand finale, something strange starts happening though. The cooks are running around frantically, the ground is shaking, the people are screaming. What's a poor lobster to do? Nothing but wait and see, I suppose. And soon, the room fills up with water, and the lobsters can swim free, or crawl free. Well, relatively free. It's likely that they still had rubber bands around their claws, but hey. In a magical lobster fairy tale land, they would float away, end up on the seafloor somewhere and enjoy their lives as they did before, free at last. However, there are numerous things that would prevent such a marvelous escape. Unfortunate I know, but we have to be realistic here. First of all, there's no guarantee that our lobsters would ever have made it outside of their tank. In all likelihood, there would have been some sort of lid holding them in even if it were to capsize. And even if they did escape the confines of the tank, there would still be the whole issue of finding their way out of the ship. Unless the breakdown in the middle occurred right through the kitchen, the creative crustaceans would be in a sealed room with closed doors. Not the ideal place to be if you are a lobster with its claws bound, no sir. Then they'd have to deal with the actual violent sinking of the ship itself. The Titanic didn't go down easy and drift its way down to the bottom. There was plenty of shaking, rattling, and possibly rolling indeed. So with all of this stacked against our yet to be read sea bugs, it's highly unlikely that they made it out of the ship. So they would have to live within the confines of the tank or kitchen until all viable food sources ran out and they died. Poor lobsters. Fun fact, lobsters can and will cannibalize their friends if there's no other option. So in all likelihood a few lobsters would eat each other and then they would all die. Really sunny outcome here, isn't it? So let's think up some alternatives. Let's say one of the chefs felt bad for the poor guys and set them free from the ship as it sank. Better to let them off with a fighting chance rather than let them languish in captivity, right? So there they go, rubber bands off, floating to the seafloor. Seems like a good place for lobsters, seeing as they tend to be living in the muck and murk down upon the bottom of the ocean. They even feed on bottom dwellers like clams, snails, and crabs. So maybe the lobsters would live a lovely life at the bottom. Well, lobsters don't usually live that deep underwater. They prefer depths of, well, not 3,800 meters. So on their way down, it's more than likely that they would succumb to the water pressure commonly associated with the bottom of the middle of the ocean. A little flattened lobster, anyone? Makes for a great sandwich. We are 0 for 2 so far on the lobster survival scenarios, and boy is this looking bleak. Well, how about this? We'll take the Good Samaritan narrative one step further. Picture this, a good hearted chef rescues some lobsters in an end of life act of serenity. But he doesn't just throw them into the sea, no. He hands them off to some of the women and children hopping into lifeboats. Maybe as a source of food, maybe because he doesn't know what else to do with them. So off the lobsters go, joining the survivors in the dinghies on the open water. Most people when handed a lobster will not react very well. Ew, they're slimy, they're pinchy, they're all funny looking. But 
will imagine a lover of all living things aboard that lifeboat who decides that their new mission is to deliver this lobster to a place where it could survive. Maybe they feel bad that the lobster has a pea brain. Maybe they want to pay the lobster back for all the times its ancestors acted as aphrodisiacs for seafood loving weirdos. Either way, this claw adorned creature is getting a first class trip back to friendlier waters. So off they go, onwards to rescue. And the lobster holder is glad they survived, but also glad that they were able to save another smaller life for little to no effort. The lobster, thankful for the help, refrained from pinching anyone during their journey. And now, they put the lobster back in the sea. Still with me? Once back in favorable waters, the lobster would roam free once again. It could live a happy and healthy life. It could find lobster love. Maybe become a lifeguard like a certain bodybuilder in Bikini Bottom. It could also be snagged in a lobster trap once again and shipped off to a landlocked restaurant where odds of being brought back to sea are much lower. But if the lobster was lucky and played its cards right and found enough food, it could have lived as long as 100 years. Maybe longer, who knows. But this is interesting, right? Because if the Titanic sank in 1912 and the lobster was a couple years old, there is a small but not insignificant chance that it has lived until 2020. Good old George, the world's oldest lobster, has been estimated to be around 140 years old. Keep it up, George. So our Titanic lobster, propelled forward by good fortune and a devil may care attitude, could have defied the odds and lived this long. It wouldn't be unheard of. Our bottom feeding friend could very well still be out there today. It's not likely, but it's nice to think about. If only the Titanic kitchen marked their lobsters in some sort of recognizable way, then we could know for sure if we ever caught it again. Oh well, I'll continue believing in the meantime that our well-traveled pincher is still out there somewhere, tucking into a meal of clams or something. How lovely. So what do you think? Did the lobsters go down with the ship? Or find an escape route and head to freedom? Is it too far-fetched to believe that one is still out there? Make sure you let me know what you're thinking down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more savory ones from What If The Titanic Disappeared. NGC7635 says the year 4000 news article, very little evidence ancient ocean liner Titanic ever existed. I can't wait for this to come true. Although by then, will evidence really matter at all? Jack Carroll says, I'm watching the Titanic while watching this video. That is a lot of Titanic. And your name's Jack, holy moly. JP asks, kind of a weird question, but can ghosts survive underwater? I'm sure they could. Absolutely they could. They would just prefer not to, as there are less people to haunt down there. Shadowblade says, it must be the work of Thanos. Whatever you say, man. I've never seen Thanos swim, have you? And Man of God 0714 says, next vid idea, is water wet? Ah, much to think about. Many perspectives to consider. Let's get a civilized argument going in the comments. Is water wet? Convince me that it's not. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I evaporate, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more aquatic questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.